So I was definitely wrong. Guys, I don't think I've seen a weapon in Splatoon 3's history that has made more people on my timeline say, Yeah, I think I want to main that. This is the one that people were going to be the loudest to bet. Boom, 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 boom. I forgot. I forgot about the CRB. It already has 3,000 more retweets than that crazy purple decapitator, and we've only had it for like a third of a day. Da! I'm no fool. I know. It's the blaster that gets you. You do this, and people blow up, and now you can have another bomb. I mean, you have one already, but yeah. There are fewer things in this world that bring joy more than like being able to like partly tap somebody and then leave a splat bomb at their feet. Like, basically, you, you could do this now. <laughs> Darn it. Cut that, cut that out. You could do something like this. And a boop. La la. Being now the only Kraken weapon with a bomb, congrats, it's gonna be in your solo queue lobbies forever. But I'm sorry, where my heart is today is, is this. Is this one. Ooh. The heavy edit Splatling Nouveau, world's longest name, and world's first bomb Splatling since 2015. This is so sad. I've never like scrolled down and seen <laughs> retired. Oh. Yeah, I get it. It's it's not in the game anymore. This thing is a midline backline hybrid monster, and I'm I'm gonna play it. <laughs> the heavy edit Splatling Nouveau puts a new twist on the heavy edit splatting to encourage some new tactics. You see, I half joke when I say this, but like, here's one tactic. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think this would actually be good, but like, you you, you could do it if you wanted to. <laughs> the fact you could be so silly with a splatting if you wanted to, is just like, it's blissful though. It brings me such joy to know you can just run around with this monster, this thing, and do exactly what I just said you could do with like, the other range blaster, but you could also do it here too. They're just giving out bombs like candy this season. Thank you. Like, it's kind of just funny. This is a tweet that Keen put out this morning, uh, where they were talking about how last year in Sizzle season, kind of had a setup like this. We had Ink Mine, Beacon, Sprinkler, Point Center, Splash Wall, Angle Shooter, some Beacon, some Ink Mine, some Angle Shooter, and uh, yeah, yeah. But like, this season served a different purpose, you know? This season is giving us options in a different way from last time. And honestly, a fair number of the weapons here would probably work pretty well with the new weapons that we're getting. You can't tell me for a heartbeat that you'd be happy going into a game of like open and finding one guy holding Tentabrella with Zuka and the other guy is chasing you around with his Kraken blaster. <laughs> come, come on, come on. He's throwing down mines at your feet so he can find you and the blaster is hitting you from the back. Oh. <laughs> this season's just like a season of options. And we don't even know what they're doing with Dowser and Hydra yet. I mean, most people probably will by the time that they watch this video because it's only like a day prior, but you know what I mean. You see, this was gonna be the part of the video where I started talking about how joyous people are and how nice it is to see again. But then like the first thing I see when I look at the quote retweets, I mean, people, people are happy, yes. But then I immediately see people desiring to call the heavy edit because it's redder the reddit and I don't... I don't know how to react to that. That's a lot of likes. I... It might be over, guys! Since we're going into what might be rumored as the final season or the last really big update, it's good to see them bringing out options. Because, like, we have options right now. But these new weapons really do give you even more of that. Like, I could go ahead and basically have a team composition built with some friends. Maybe I have two, three of the weapons chosen out. But, you know, I still want, like, something maybe that has a little bit of range. Maybe has, like, a little bit of aggression. I don't know what to pick. And, like, I feel like I have choices now. Like, there always were choices, but you have new stuff now. Like, the bamboozler with the bombs that I haven't even talked about the new Splatanas that are gonna be kinda gross. Being in a space where multiple different compositions work anyway is good for the game. It's good for people. It'll inspire people to try other things, see what works best for them against all these weapons that are showing up new and old. Even in the context of solo queue, understanding what weapons your opponents have and how they can react to the situation that you're putting them, like, them into is like, super important. 
Just as much as you understanding how you can react to situations they put you into. When paint and pressure starts to become a lot, you need to actually be aware of what's going on, or else playing a slower weapon can really start to hurt. At the same time, I think it's gonna be really funny when this like entire season starts rolling and everyone's out there playing like a blaster or a long range dually and the like, and you quickly come to the realization that since no one might be playing your typical like shooter gun, like Splash, for example, that the, your solo queue lobbies are kind of gonna be lacking a little bit in paint. <laughs> I think I think that's the funniest part is like for forgetting like how these updates sometimes change things. I think people get scared that it's gonna be like that forever, but it's really not. Cause you're gonna play like two hours of the game on the first night and be like, wow, I really feel like I'm suddenly painting all of a sudden a lot. And the answer is, yeah, you probably are, to make up for the lack of these little guys. For all the mean things that we say about shooters and painters sometimes, they are necessary. Like, I, I like this little clip here, right? It's kind of saved our buddy at random from being chased. It just makes me happy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I did that. I did that with my versatility and my movement. Yar, gar, 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 gar. <laughs> like, some people who play weapons like this on the first night of an update are people that just want to try and keep their lobbies vaguely close to normal. Even without the promise of third kits, having versatility and having options guarantees people have something to do. I, I don't see a world where anybody is getting every single four star or five star badge, but hey, I, 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 could, I, could be, I could be proven wrong on that one in particular. Even for people who just like to play like midline weapons, when you have options and on top of that, good options, it gives people that desire to practice more than one thing. Because if you only really like one thing and you get tired of that one thing, of course it's gonna be hard. Of course you're not gonna have interest in playing the game. And that's totally understandable. I haven't seen so many people so interested to do stuff and try stuff in game in a while. Will that feeling last? Yeah. <laughs> but it's nice to imagine that maybe, just maybe, it could. Even if we don't get anything beyond this point, you can't argue that they're trying not to like future-proof the game a little bit. Like when you have these choices, it just inspires people to want to play the game more. I would love to see where they go with the game in the future if they choose to do more. And if they don't, I feel like a lot of people would be more okay with the place the game is in now, as opposed to where it was, let's say, three to six months ago. We're likely on the edge of seeing changes that make the game feel different permanently. Like, you'll still see the creature, unless they like, you know, like, dr drastically nerf it in the next, like, 10 days, which could happen. Like, you could see a lot of compositions of weapons that include this pencil with, like, one of the new midline weapons that people are really excited about. And then, you know, you, you throw in your generic couple of painters or AOE weapons and you go to town. From a competitive standpoint, there's just so much mixing and matching that can be done, and that's exciting for people. I don't think many people at all would be against seeing the list of a couple dozen weapons that people like to use go up a fair amount. It makes it more exciting to watch the game, too, from like a casual viewing perspective. Not to imply that the creature is gonna be gone. They don't tend to make really big changes with like start of season updates, so uh, you, we can safely assume that Zuka will probably still be there lurking in a corner. I hope this update brings you weapons that you want to get stickers for. You know? The people are joyous and I hope you are too. If you don't care about weapons, which is totally fine by the way, I hope something else brings you joy with this update. Maybe just your solo lobbies in general might just feel better and that might make you clap your hands. But if there is something you really like that you've seen, hey, 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 chat. Hey, 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 chat. You should tell me about it in the comments. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably be playing like everything when the update happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, you could do this now and then just leave him. Well, that's going to kill him anyway. Look, you can do something like this and then tee la la. Look, you could do something. You could do something like this.